tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Um, tell us something about yourself. Where you graduated from and where, where are you based <laughs> now? Okay, so thanks for that, Erica. And again, I'm also excited to be here and just to share with you my story and the story of our organization. So hi to everyone, to everyone listening right now. I'm Ariza. I'm currently based in Manila, uh, but actually my family is from Mindanao. So provinciana ako, like my parents, and I'll tell you more about them later. Um, I'm already a young professional, so I have a job working in marketing and public relations, aside from my nonprofit work. Um, I, but I graduated with a degree in engineering from UP Diliman, so medyo malayo, but uh, yeah, I think millennials these days can get to be quite yeah. multi- um, multi-expert in maybe several fields so i guess i kind of represent that part of us you know how we're so um interested in different fields and industries um, take the boards for that well i took industrial engineering and completed it uh, but so industrial engineering kasi, or IE, we don't actually have a board exam, unlike civil engineering or electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. So I wasn't obligated to take it. And even though I didn't um, mm -hmm. pursue my career of being an engineer, like my batchmates or my classmates, I feel like it's still a big part of my life. Because when you're when you kind of got educate when you get educated in that mindset like very engineering and science and database it goes into every aspect of your life now even with my nonprofit work or even in my works of marketing i also have to be data centered and efficient and kind of uh, very systematic in how i view things so nandun pa rin talaga siya Okay, uh, but what made you decide to take up engineering? Is it in your family, ba? Um, interesting question. So none of my family is in that field. Uh, what happened was that when I was in high school, um, I had the, I was very lucky to go to Philippine Science High School and get a scholarship. Because the bus had in. Um, Going into Philippine Science High School, it's what a lot of students want. Kasi libre, you don't get, to, you don't have to pay for tuition. This meron ka pang stipend. So yeah. I got to ano Pisay or Philippine Science High in Diliman, Quezon City. And um, yeah. after Pisay, students are obligated to take either a math, science, engineering, or related course. And that's why I ended up taking engineering. So with your um, company now. How long have you been working for them, Naman? Well, it's actually our family's business. Um, okay. So I've been working since I graduated four years ago. Um, but now mm -hmm. I have been uh, like creating my own firm, Narin, because my parents also Ooh. want to retire. So that's what I'm doing okay. right now. I'm kind of offshooting to a new firm which I'm creating and that firm will focus more on digital marketing and um, uh, public relations but we want to do also advocacy based work so working with other NGOs working with companies that want to do like mm -hmm. corporate social responsibility or CSR campaigns so that new company mm -hmm. is called Diginspire because it you know, uh -huh. kind of puts together our um, what our expertise, the kind of expertise we want, which is in digital, but also in kind of inspirational and making connections with people through marketing and communication. Organization yeah. is about what is Chris for Peace? Okay, so Chris is basically a nonprofit organization that promotes peace through education. So mm -hmm. most people actually hindi nila naiisip that it's important to promote peace. And for a lot of people, um, parang vague yung concept eh. Ano nga ba ang peace? Like, how do I feel it? Uh -oh. And dito sa Philippines, when you're talking about peace, usually it's in connection with uh, just Mindanao or just the plight of our Muslim brothers and sisters in certain areas of Mindanao. So yung ibang tao, iniisip nila na yung peace hanggang doon. But kami sa Chris, we actually want peace to be everyone's advocacy. We want to tell people how important it is that we know the value of peace and especially for young people that they know how important it is to promote peace among their 
own circles and community. So um, later on, uh, I hope to show you um, some of the photos we have, Sakir, some of the slides that I prepared. So siguro po, we can bring that up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So there we go. I just want to give you like a overall cuento of the who gots that um, made Chris what it is today. Um, next slide, please. And I really want to start with a story of love. So, pratiko ang kina cuento. Na yung cuento namin sa Chris, it really began with a love story, <laughs> and it's an interesting one because it's one na parang Romeo and Juliet na you know sobrang may um and daming balakid and daming like hurdles na pinagdaanan but in the end nagkatuluyan din naman so this story is yes. the story of my parents um my dad he's catholic and he's from Zamboanga that's my mom she's muslim naman and she's from Sulu so both of them came from quite religious families so when they met immediately you know there was this thought na we couldn't date or it would be so hard to get our parents to agree to have us to allow us to date and see each other and that it might be impossible to sustain a relationship pero sabi nga nila love is blind and you can't underestimate the power of love no matter what so even though you had those forces and you had those challenges they still ended up together and they decided to start a family together next slide please so ayun so What's interesting din about my parents is not only did they decide to um, end up together, even though they have different religions, they also decided that they wouldn't convert. So they wouldn't convert to just Islam or just Christianity. They decided to keep those two religions in the home. So when I was born, so this is me, like many years ago, <laughs> when I was born <laughs> as the first child, my parents decided na. Um, we would have both religions in our household, and they would teach me and eventually my siblings both religions. And so weird, honestly, when I look back at my childhood, you know, Erica, as in um, when I was a kid growing up, we would celebrate Christmas, like ngayon, holidays, but we would also celebrate mm. Idil Fitir yeah. and Idil Adha, which is the, which is mm. the festivals yeah. in Islam. And then um, right. when we were at home, we don't eat pork out of respect for my mom okay. and um, yeah but, yeah yeah but uh when my dad goes to mass sometimes we go with him like even my mom comes with him but she doesn't participate in the sacrament or the ceremony she just sits and the parang the importance of going together was just so we could all be together as a family and then the basabaha usually you have an altar you have like the bible there or some sort of um corner for your um for your faith but in our house we didn't have that because my parents said that our house was like a neutral ground and we can't have objects of islam or christianity there so out of respect for just one another and when i have relatives visiting then and then like some of them are muslim and then they teach me about the quran about their prayers and then some of them are catholic and they teach me about the bible and about uh, what it means to you know follow the teachings of jesus christ and but the interesting thing growing up was that i realized that um there were more similarities than differences between the two religions next slide please Next slide po. Ayan, there. Okay. And parang when I was thinking about it, it felt like I was growing up between the cross and the crescent moon. Because these are the symbols of Islam and Christianity, right? So parang I was in the middle because I could see both. I had learned from both. And my identity as a person was really shaped by both religions. And I know it's super weird, but that's really how I was brought up. Can I ask what your religion is? Oh, me? I am born again. Born again born Christian. Again. Yeah. Uh -oh. This is a very oh. interesting story. I'm really, Why? really... Okay. I love... I, I, I'm so, oh, Okay, continue. And, yeah. And honestly, Hindi, it's not something that I used to want to share before when I was younger. Because I felt that people would look at me differently and kind of um, say that what my parents did, it's not acceptable, or that a person can't have two religions, or that 
I should just choose one. You know, I can't identify with both. So, may mga ganong doubts before, pero ngayon, I've, I think it's more important to share the story. And, you know, back to this slide that I have right now, what we had in our home was so nice. We were somehow able to have an environment of peace and harmony. The only problem is that when we go outside, iba yung kwento eh. It's not as nice, it's not peaceful, it's not harmonious. And when you put Islam and Christianity together in one sentence, usually yung usapin ay about conflict, about discrimination, about prejudice. And there's so many communities that have both Muslims and Christians in areas of Mindanao that are um, that experience war, that experience terrorism. So it's it's not it's like the opposite of what I had at home. And so our um, what we were thinking was that as a family before, anong pwede namin gawin? Parang, well, how could we share what we found in our home to people outside? So that was the running question. Next slide, please. Okay, and Sigur, I have to share, Erica, another experience that I had aside from um, having that experience with these two religions. Because this other experience, naman, this is about education and how I grew up as a student. Um, so I mentioned to you earlier, I entered Philippine Science High School as a scholar. That was when I was in college, I was in UP also as a scholar. And honestly, I felt so lucky because hindi lahat ng estudyante nagkakaroon ng ganitong opportunity. And I, I really felt privileged to be able to not basically not pay anything from high school to college but on the other hand i also felt so guilty because i know how important education is we all know how important education is it's parang make or break she. you know if you don't have a degree if you're not able to graduate you, there's so much a uh, potential that's left unfulfilled so i felt guilty because i know that there were so many other kids who seemed like they deserve more they deserve to have that kind of free education, those scholarships more than I did. So I felt that there really was a need to parang pay it forward. And I guess that experience, you know, with my parents and then this experience of being a scholar and knowing how important education is, that's what really led me to building Chris, the nonprofit organization. Ayun. Uh, so next slide, please. Okay. Is that you? <laughs> Yes, that's, that's you. Gabe. This was in high school, right? Yeah, this was in first year high school. Okay. And one thing I appreciate about um, the schools that I was in, because public schools, the government schools, is they also really teach you that it's important to think about the people around you, your community, your country. Because you're ka ng gobyerno, ng mga taxpayers. So your education isn't just for you. It's something you can also share to others and try to empower others. Kaya I'm sharing this photo because um, I remember this was the first day of first year high school. <laughs> and parang back then, when I entered as a scholar, I thought, what can I do? What can I share? What can I share? How do I use all of these privileges, use all of this luck that I've had, these blessings, and share it with other people? And yun nga, that's what eventually led me to Chris many years later. Next slide, please. So our ideology at Chris is really to use education to promote peace. Um, so sabi nga dito ni Maria Montessori, establishing lasting peace is the work of education. All politics can do is keep us out of war. Mm, yan, controversial. Pero yeah, we really believe that education is a key to peace. Next slide. So yeah, so there. That's what Chris for that's how Chris for Peace started. That's how Chris was born through this whole journey that I've had that I can um, connect but to what my parents experienced also before coming from Mindanao. So Siguro, I stop here a bit if you have questions about everything that I've said so far. And later on I wanna share more about Chris and what we do. Okay. During their you know, time. Um, kasi iba eh, iba yung religions nila. So, um, how did their parents deal with it? Nakwento yeah. ba yun sa'yo ever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, there was a lot of resistance. So, I think when they got together, 
both of both sides yung parents nila not weren't really happy that they were together kasi mm. my dad he came from a religious catholic family in fact his mom my lola wanted him to become a priest as in he was enrolled to the seminary but then he left kasi he didn't feel that it was for him and then my mom naman she also comes from a religious muslim family um i have uh, relatives who are very devout who help build uh, mosques in Mindanao who um, have gone to pilgrimage in Mecca so that's what we call the Hajj in Islam so both sides talaga religious eh. kaya nung nagsama sila parang what are you guys doing it's not it was it wasn't something that they accepted but then i think my parents showed by example, na kaya nila, and that somehow they're able to retain their own religions and they're able to preserve that parang identity when they passed it on to their kids. And I think through the years, my grandparents and our relatives accepted them. And okay na kaming lahat ngayon. Pero I think in the beginning with my parents, it was really a struggle. Kaya grabe, um, idol ko talaga parents ko, wagas ang kanilang pag-ibig. Yes, love conquers all nga to naman. To answer your questions. Yeah. So, Ariza, <laughs> growing up, so, you know, you were in a household, I mean, uh, maganda naman yung, yung setup ng parents mo na neutral yung home nyo. Yes, but, yes. Um, was there a time na, syempre, I think, we were kids eh. So, pag kids, yeah. then, kung si baka, ma-confuse ka, or, you know, you were just very curious na, did you ever have that talk with your parents na, nako-confuse ka na when it comes to religion kasi religion plays a big role in the family eh. so did you yeah. ever feel that way did you ever feel confused at the time yeah yeah definitely um so i think one important experience was kasi i in grade school i went to a catholic na all girls school so both my parents mm. were fine with putting me there kasi syempre yung uh, catholic all girls school they also accept you know, students of other religions. So, um, yes, yes. so I went to an exclusive Catholic school, and there, shempre, we had CLE Christian Living subjects. We had we were we had projects now going to church. We were supposed to do like reports on the Bible and everything. And at that time, you know, I felt more. I felt really Catholic. Like there was no um, the most of what i was learning was really about catholicism but i think when my mom saw this she also wanted to like show me her world and when she showed me that no una i felt confused kasi parang how can two religions coexist you know parang most people just have one religion and that's it and how could my parents you know accept this kind of situation between them and you near the sala confused so as a kid i had these questions but then the realization later on as i mentioned earlier is the principles are the same eh? the values are the same the teachings are mostly the same um you look at verses from the quran and the bible and they talk about compassion about kindness about respect about faith and about sacrifice so there's so many more things that are similar than different sometimes the differences nasa pangalan lang or nasa sobrang small details lang so i eventually when i learned more about both islam and christianity i i saw na you know um there's not much parang there's not much really to fight about or to argue about because when you look at like what the heart of christianity and what the heart of islam is it's really more about love it's really more more about these values i'm sure you know this yeah and siguro another um experience that i had that was hard when i was a kid was um telling people uh, that my mom was muslim um because i grew up here in manila mostly and okay. since i come from a I, I came from a catholic all-girls school most of my classmates catholic talaga. and then they get so confused when i tell them my mom's muslim not only because you know na parang the two religions thing but also because they would say things like aren't muslims terrorists or aren't muslims violent 
or why aren't you wearing a scarf the hijab thing or why isn't your mom wearing this or um aren't you supposed to be aren't you not supposed to be studying in this school so stuff like that <laughs> and um i didn't you know hindi ko naman inisip that it's their fault kasi um they also didn't know much about islam to overcome that what would you what would you tell them well i would tell them that you know when i'm talk to my mom when i meet my relatives who are muslim they were the nicest people ever you know i i so from mm-hmm. they they were doctors and nurses who would work abroad and you know you can really see that they didn't do their job just to earn money but because they actually cared for their patients and the people that they worked with i had relatives na you know typical OFW who would be sacrificing so many years of their life na um to take care of their families and their kids and these were really nice people who volunteered in their own organizations whether that's in my mom's um province in Sulu or in Zamboanga where some of my relatives are so I had no doubt in my mind that the Muslims I knew from my relatives from my family and even their friends they were really good people so I would tell them na ni naman ganyan yung nanay ko ni naman ganyan yung tita ko ni naman ganyan yung pinsan ko so at even as a kid I could already parang address that prejudice kasi the mm-hmm. way I grew up I really didn't see that and yung narrative na yon na you know Muslims are more prone to violence and that they're more prone to terrorism i think it's really a misconception that's been created by media and by the news that we see yes. and by yes. uh a lot of other things so that's one of the reasons why chris exists because we want to address that we want to tell people not to judge we want them to think differently and to think critically first before making an assumption or making a judgment right you guys right. start pala okay So we started 2008. Um that's when we did our first project which was mm. a library. Uh, so yeah, I- I'll show you here with these photos then. Um so we started in 2008 and since we were promoting peace through education, you know, our project namin was building libraries. So actually that's why we're called Chris because we were initially named Christiano Islam Peace Library. Oh, yeah. Oh Yeah, when people see Chris, yeah, they say sponsored by any Chris Aquino or someone. So it's no, <laughs> it's Christiana Islam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, this is Chris. Isn't sponsored by Chris Aquino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. Yeah, so, Go ahead. Yeah, we started with building libraries, and um, you inisip kasi namin was. It was important to build libraries and give a lot of young people access like to books and computers in areas where there's conflict. Why? Because one reason why young people who are our age or even younger join terrorist groups like Abu Sayyaf, Kunwari, is because they don't have they don't see other alternatives. Like they don't have enough access to education, they don't have the resources they need to be able to learn well. So, kaya mas madali for them to go down a path of violence that's away from all these promising um, opportunities that education could bring. And that's why we decided that libraries were important. And another reason why we also thought libraries were a good solution was because feeling naman when more pe- when more young people read stories when they read books when they're exposed to this knowledge no open your mind nila they get exposed to different kinds of cultures religions and countries and it just helps them be more open and be more accepting of this diversity that the world has and then lastly we also wanted a space to physically promote peace so Before, when we started our libraries in mostly in Mindanao, um, we have both Christian and Muslim kids going to the library. So, ang mga yari yung mga Christian kids, they'll be like on this side, and then the Muslim kids will be on the other side, and they kind of keep to themselves. But in our libraries, we have a lot of activities where we make them mix together, and because they play together and they read together and they learn together, they eventually find friends. On the other side, and then eventually, after a few months, you see the kids na halo halo na. 
So when you na kita na may division, you really see them having friendships, and it was really nice to see. And other than the libraries, we also started a scholarship program. So I can tell you more about that later. And we also donated books and school supplies to um, a lot of young people and communities mostly affected by conflict and poverty. Ayun. So that's how Chris started. Next slide, please. And since then, 2008 is a long time ago. Um, I'm very privileged and we're, we're very blessed at Chris that we've been able to help thousands of young people in different communities. Next slide. And I, I just want to share maybe a few of the special things that we did. So for instance, this uh, picture that you see, it's in a mobile library in Sulu that we did in partnership with the uh, uh, Marines in the area. So this area, so Sulu, it's called Patikol. And it was actually one of the sites of the most one of the most gruesome attacks by the Abu Sayyaf. They beheaded uh, two teachers, I believe, many years ago in this same area. And it's also the site near several explosions and kidnappings. So, malala talaga sa area na to. But we're very lucky that in 2017, we were able to partner with the Marines and other like-minded organizations to bring a different kind of quote-unquote weapon to these areas. So we brought mobile libraries, we brought books, and then some of our partners brought medicines um, and other things that the communities really needed. So this was a really nice photo to have, even though, honestly, it was one of the scariest projects we've had to do for Chris. So imagine um, it was a simple like outreach. Now we had these books and we had these libraries, but in the procession ng cars, whenever we would go around Sulu, ang kasama namin, military tank, and like a couple of trucks with Marines in them holding their big guns. So it was scary, but um, we, we will keep doing this, I hope, because we really need to reach out to these people. Next slide, please. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, we also have a lot of activities in our libraries where we really try to bridge the gap between the students. Because it's not only students coming from different religions that we work with. Some of these students come from different indigenous groups. Some of these young people, different economic backgrounds. And it's nice to just see them build these connections and open their eyes. Next slide, please. And I mentioned earlier that we had a scholarship program. So we launched a scholarship program in 2011. And since then, we've been able to help 400 students complete their education. So yung students na yon, iba-iba, some were preschool, some were grade school, high school, and we had seven college graduates during that time. So it's not a lot, but I think we really tried our best to have a deep impact in the lives of the students that we touched. And we hope to relaunch our scholarship program sometime soon, hopefully next year. Next slide. Okay, so can we go back to the previous slide? Oh. Okay, thank you. So, siguro I'll stop muna there kasi there have been a lot of changes in how Chris has um, had its project since 2008. So, I will tell you more about some of those changes later, but siguro I'll stop here if you have questions or if you want me to um, discuss more about certain projects that we had. Well, experience okay. ka ba na parang wow, you know, I will really remember this day um, till you know till the day I leave this earth. Now, parang I I want to tell this story to my kids. Did you ever have that realization or that experience Obviously. that made you realize that? Yeah. So thanks for asking that. Because so brandame, as in, um, I feel like I aged so much in the past years <laughs> because there were a lot of positive things. But there were also a lot of challenges. Let's start with the really positive things that happened. Um, so I remember, Jumper, I won't mention specific names, but I remember we had a scholar before. Um, so we were supporting her when she was grade five, I think. And um, when between grade five and grade six, her parents lost employment and it was really hard for their family. And she's from Zamboanga. 
So, usually in those areas, especially if you come from a poor family, ang sasabihin ng parents mo, huwag ka na mag-aral, you know. Uh, go back home, uh, help us, get a job, pwede kang maging katulong, pwede ka tumulong sa farm. Usually, ganito yung prospects pag ganong age. Eh. Um, so, siya naman, gusto niya mag-aral and she wanted to continue. And we encouraged her to keep studying because she was really brilliant. As in, she was one of the top sa class niya and she wanted to become a doctor someday. So, on grade 5 to grade 6, fortunately, she was able to get to grade 6. And I remember parang having tears in my eyes when I saw the picture of her graduation day in grade 6. Because from a, from a girl who almost didn't continue schooling, who almost stopped school because of poverty. Um, on the day of graduation, she had like 20 medals on her, wow. like over her toga. She was the valedictorian and she was like the leadership awardee. She was like the service awardee. She was best in science, best in math, ganon. Tas, grabe, I remember seeing that and just um, parang having tears in my eyes na parang just the help that we were able to give through Chris, na kahit maliit lang, like for her, um, it was such a major turning point. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, now she is in med school. And hopefully, you know, she'll finish and become a doctor. Are you open to accepting mga volunteers for Chris for Peace? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll tell you more about the activities later that we need help with. Mm-hmm. Um, but siguro for now, if it's okay, I want to share another story then, because it's sure. I think it also illustrates like how kids in Mindanao in some areas of Mindanao are having a really hard time because of the conflict and all happening there. So we also had another scholar before. She's a man. She's Muslim. The girl earlier, she's Catholic. So this girl, she's Muslim. And the first time I met her, I was so um, I was in awe. Because we were having like um, a, a Thanksgiving thing where we got all the scholars mm-hmm. together and we filmed them. We took videos of them thanking the donors who supported their scholarship. And Shampre, we had a batch of like grade school students there who were, you know, just sharing. And Shampre, um, hindi pa sila ganun ka like confident and vocal and expressive so most of them were you know thank you po uh, this is a really good opportunity and maraming salamat po sa inyo too so very timid lang ano lang and then this small girl comes in and i've never met i haven't met her yet dun ko lang siya na meet and then when she when it was her turn to get the mic she was like so um Sobrang galing niya, sobrang expressive, sobrang charismatic, sobrang loud. And I was, I remember being so shook that time. Kasi, um, <laughs> she was studying, and most of our scholars were studying in public schools in Zamboanga. And, syempre, they're, are, they're, they can get really talented there, and they have really good teachers. Pero, you can't, the level of the quality of education is still far from what we have here in Manila, for instance. So for this girl to be speaking like that with confidence and charisma and in straight English, like having this parang impromptu speech thanking the donors of our organization and all of us being impressed because she was a small girl and we didn't expect that from her, you know, it just blew us away. And I never forgot her. And I was so sad when the next year, I heard that um, her dad was killed um, because of an incident that may have been related to Abu Sayyaf. And um, in the same day, her mom was also shot and her mom was paralyzed. So it was such a painful blow to their whole family. And um, ang malalapa is that whoever killed and um, targeted their parents also told them that Kung hindi kayo magtatago, kayo nang sunod. So, we didn't really find out what exactly happened, who was involved, and if it was really related to Abu Sayyaf or something similar. Pero, these things happen. 
in areas like Zamboanga, where this girl lives. And um, the effect on a young person is just huge. You know, there's so much trauma. There's so much... Um, there's It's such a big challenge to surmount. And this girl, they had to go into hiding. So she stopped school. But um, eventually, several months after, uh, she resurfaced. And then she asked for our help so that we could continue her scholarship. And we willingly helped her, of course, because we want to do all we can to you know, help her get back on track and fulfill her dreams. And um, I remember that year, na her that happened to her parents she, when she went back to school oh, even though she only attended a few months um she still ended up graduating i think top five in her batch wow and more than that she i remember talking to her i think after her graduation and she told me na ate ariza gusto ko maging lawyer kasi yun yung dream ng dad ko for me and i think um she was also very passionate about it now because of what she saw happening to her parents and how she wanted to bring justice to what happened to their family. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that I haven't stayed connected with her in the past years, but I think she actually received a scholarship from abroad to take up a course wow. going to law. Yeah. Uh, I nice. guess about the some of the scholars that we've had. Um, one of them, also a girl, also from Zamboanga. She um, she was one of our scholars until college. And when she was in college, she was having a really hard time. Because even though we had given her a scholarship, her family also um, expected her to support them. And Hindi, it, it's something that a lot of young people struggle with. Na inaasahan sila ng parents sila kahit na nag-aaral pa rin sila. So, what happened was that while she was taking her college course, she was also staying in as a maid, as a katulong. So, um, she told me her schedule before na at 4 a.m. she would wake up to wash dishes and wash the laundry tapos magliluto siya and then at 7 she go she goes to school and then at 5 or 6 pm she comes back and then she does all the chores again until like 10 to 12 and then after that she would um she would still study for a few hours tapos nakatulog siya like 2 am na or 1 am na tapos gigising ulit siya ng 4 am and that was her life for several years but um what was very nice about how it all turned out was she eventually became a teacher because she graduated from education. And we saw how passionate she was about teaching because even when she was a high school student, she was already volunteering to library and to teach the other kids. And we didn't ask her to. We didn't you know, have a program for it. She just went to our library and started teaching, tutoring kids. So we saw that her heart was really in there. And taking into account that her parents really needed the support and her siblings really needed the financial support, she could have chosen, you know, to get a higher paying job somewhere or to enroll in a field na she would know na malaki kagad yung kita niya or to go abroad. But she didn't choose those things. Because what she really wanted when she started working was to work in the same public school where she studied. So bumalik siya to that to the same barangay she's from in Zamboanga, and she is teaching there now. She's teaching science. And what we really love about her is um, because she's our scholar, she also shares to her kids about Chris, her students about, you know, our story of peace and education. And hopefully someday we can also work with her on a bigger project, maybe for her students or for her school or for her community. So, saludo talaga as in I've, whenever I meet people like our scholars or the people that we've worked with, mga volunteers namin, nalulula ako. Like, I feel so small compared to the challenges that they face, the strength that they've been able to showcase. As in, grabe talaga. What did you mean when you said na iba na yung parang, what, what, what is that shift? What shift did you make? Okay. Well, um, maybe I can ask to put back my slides so I can also show you. 
Okay. Okay. So before I talk about this slide, yeah, I wanna we tell you about the, the difficulties we've had at Chris. We're a small NGO, and most of our funding is really from donations from individuals, especially in the past. Um, and we we didn't have paid staff, so we're all volunteers. Um, and obviously, the money and the effort that it takes to run libraries was so big. As in, sobrang nahirapan kami. And adding to that, we had a scholarship program, pa, which cost a lot of money. And that was also very difficult for us. And I remember virtually my entire college life, I I fortunately never had to worry about my tuition because I'm a scholar in the UP. But I had a problem with my tuition because of scholars in sa Chris. So that's it. But um, eventually, we decided that it would be more efficient for us to take our um, programs and our mission outside of a physical structure. Because for one, Mahal nga, mag-maintain ng libraries. You had your utilities, you had rent, you had manpower that you needed. On the other hand, the young people that we targeted were also evolving. So they don't really go to libraries anymore. Um, and most of the material that they want to read or interact with is online. So we really wanted that shift. And then thirdly, we realized namin before na our mission is to promote peace through education. But we kind of already dictated what those so specific solutions should be. So we were telling young people that we should have these libraries, that we should have a scholarship program, that was, you can volunteer and you can support. And the project was already there. But we realized that we're not good enough to dictate those solutions. And we think that young people, especially those we target in these areas like Zamboanga, Sulu, Marawi, Davao, they would have a better knowledge of what's going on with their peers, what the context is in their community, and they would be in a better position to actually tell us what to do instead of us telling them what to do. So ngayon, ang focus talaga namin is more capacity building. So as I mentioned here in this slide, right now, our main programs have to do with training and conferences to mentor young Filipinos on peace building on le and leadership. So we have them into conferences like this, yung isang bayan peace building conference, where we teach them about peace, about the state of conflict in the Philippines, about um, how peace is related to the other sustainable development goals, how um, and also how they can manage their own project, how they can manage a budget, how they can get volunteers to support them, how they can get donors, and with those two, parang we want to bring in peace building through education and youth leadership. And for us, this is more of a bottom-up approach. Because we equip, we equip these young leaders with the tools and the knowledge that they need to start their own projects. And then we support them along the way. So I'll tell you about the project of ours that we do specifically for that. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And knowing that... Um, a lot of young people are online now, so mas online na talaga yung exposure. So we're also bringing our campaigns online. So for instance, we have both online and offline campaigns to promote values like empathy, like respect, like unity and diversity. And in this picture I'm showing you, it's an exhibit that we did in January. Um, so it was a partnership with the Austrian Embassy of Manila. We had a lomography exhibit called uh, we are one, unity and diversity. And what we did was we got photographs by artists made from all over the world and from the Philippines. And the, th the theme was unity and diversity. And we put all of those pictures together um, in an exhibit that we had in Intramuros. So it was Intramuros siya. But also we posted them online so that we can share them to other people. So the kinds of campaigns like that. And I remember in 2017, we also celebrated International Hijab Day. So World Hijab Day is where young women from Islam kind of come together and celebrate, you know, wearing the hijab and what it means to them and what it means to their faith and to their modesty and to their respect and their own values. So we made an event where we invited non-Muslim women 
and we parang partnered them up with Muslim women and then these Muslim women um, taught them how to wear the hijab but at the same time kinakwento din nila yung experience nila why the hijab is important to them why to them it's a form of faith and devotion and why it's not only to be modest but also to show their commitment to their faith so nagkaroon ng you know exchange between these muslim women and then these non-muslim women it was really nice to see this solidarity between women so certain programs like that next slide please and right now we also have um programs to help young people adjust to the pandemic so ngayon kasi a lot of our activities are online kasi wala kaming choice so we also have webinars we have virtual trainings we have virtual conferences but the problem is that the young people we're targeting most of the time they don't have enough access to the internet or they don't enough they don't have enough access to devices so we're trying to fix that um, we have a project called hashtag eduikao um, and the basically we're providing tablets to students in need of those tablets so we've been able to give i think around 30 tablets already to students from luzon to mindanao and yung system namin is it's um is they have to apply for it and pina prioritize namin yung mga students who are heavily in need who are from the most low income families and um Usually, right after they receive the tablet, they send us a photo of a video right away that they took from that tablet. And may kita mo talaga yung saya sa mukha nila and yung um, parang relief that finally I'll be able to uh, have online classes. Finally, I don't have to share with my siblings yung isang phone or tablet na meron kami sa bahay. Or finally, may load na ako or may device na ako that I can use to, not just for classes, but just to, you know, learn on my own, to learn how to um, do makeup, to learn how to do art, to learn how to just edit videos. You know, these young people, they're so creative. And um, what we want to do is, yun, yeah, um, like how we did with our libraries before, give them access to education because it's such a transformative process that helps them realize their full potential. Next slide, please. And we're also happy because we are able to share the experience and the story of Chris to different parts of the world through different events. Next slide, please. Uh, that's you, right? Yes, that's me. <laughs> Go girl, okay. <laughs> and, and through experiences like that conferences like that in other countries chris has been able to partner with really fantastic institutions and organizations who have been supporting us for several years so one of them is the coffee Annan foundation that's um mm -hmm. founded by the former united nations secretary general coffee Annan. so he spearheaded something called extremely together Extremely Together is an alliance of 10 young leaders from all over the world who are working to promote peace and fight violent extremism. So I was very lucky to be included as one of those leaders. And as a result, we've been able to receive a lot of support from the Kofi Annan Foundation and their partner organizations. Next slide, Pop. And right now, we have a really important project. Um, it's going... It's extremely together the philippines chapter and what we're basically going to do what we'll basically do is to help conduct more trainings on how young people can prevent violent extremism and to just bring this kind of international um international movement to the philippines next slide please Next slide, please. So um, right now, Extremely Together has chapters in Somalia, Uganda, Pakistan, and now the Philippines as well. Next slide. Okay, so Siguro, just to sum up the things I've shared, um, one important realization I had when I was working with Chris was how much the experience shaped me as a person. And but one of the ways in which I gave tribute to that whole experience was when I had my graduation photo no graduate ako from college. 
So that was in 2016. And then a graduation photo ako, di ba sa UP. Um, what you usually do is you take a graduation photo with the sublay, mm-hmm. and then you're a Filipina, right. and then you put the sublay over it. But and I had that grad photo. That's the one you see on the left. But I also thought that part of me wanted to bring my mom's identity into the fold and bring um, not only that identity of Islam that she shared with me, but also her culture being coming from Sulu, being part of the Taosog tribe, which is um, based in Sulu. And I was able to present that through this other picture on the right. And when I was taking these photos and I put them together, I realized that what I've been doing throughout this whole time was telling people that these two people are the same. That the girl on the right is the same as the girl on the left. That she has this, they both have the same dreams. They both have the same aspirations. They both want to change the world. And there's no difference even though they might have different identities or they look different or they dress differently, there's no difference. And what I'm trying to share with other people is to have that same perception. Na kahit magkaiba tayo ng religion or even though we have different cultures or backgrounds, there's so much that we have in common. And if we're able to realize that, then we'd have a better chance of working together, not just to address conflict, but we really need this unity and this respect for each other to work on bigger problems. Like, for instance, ngayon, sa pandemic. Without that unity, without that solidarity, we won't be able to parang put our resources together and really rally a bigger movement to address the pandemic globally. And then you also have climate change. You also have widespread poverty and inequality worldwide. So. Yeah, without that unity, without being extremely together, as I mentioned, we're not it's strong from, enough. Yeah. Ano nga, from Mr. Kofi Annan, who uh, passed mm-hmm. away like two years ago. So, sabi niya, mm-hmm. education is quite simply peace building by another name. It's the most effective form of defense spending there is. So, I'm done with this PowerPoint, but I just want to share that it's so important that we all realize that we have such an impact when it comes to peace. So kahit hindi ka taga Mindanao or kahit hindi ka Muslim or kahit hin- you don't live in those areas that experience conflict, like you can do so much. As in just mm-hmm. the fact that you kind of suspend judgment or when you think of a stereotype or when there's that thought in your head na there's a bias na about Muslims or about people from indigenous groups, like just the fact that you process it and not reinforce it malaking bagay na siya and i always tell i always want to share people that kasi syempre dito sa philippines majority of us are christians or catholic and hindi usually na share yung perspective ng mga muslim filipinos but imagine if you were a muslim filipino growing up in the philippines and you don't see yourself being represented as much. Thanks for that, Erica. Um, first of all, uh, for anybody who's interested to volunteer or see how they want to partner with us, check out our projects at crisperpeace.org. You can also find our um, social media there. So that's k r i s f o r peace.org. Um, and you can also shoot us an email from there. Right now, we're looking for um, a lot of help so first is, if you want to donate um, money or if you want to donate secondhand devices, you can um, go to our Facebook page and see the details for our hashtag Eduikao project. Because that project is ongoing and we'll keep doing it as long as there are kids having online classes these days. We recently partnered with PLDT Smart Foundation and they gave us load pocket Wi-Fi and tablets. But um, the more we could help, the better. So you can support that. Um, secondly, uh, if you want to work with us, if you're like a youth organization or if you're an LGU or if you're a school that wants to have um, a partnership 
to do a peace education seminar or to just have programs that in your school that we can help with. Um, we do peace education training. We do uh, project management for peace and development projects. So we can work with you on that. So let's talk. That was we can think of a way to collaborate. And then thirdly, um, it would mean so much to us if you could share our current project that we're running, which is Extremely Together Philippines. Um, actually, on Monday, we'll be launching, uh, we'll be accepting applications for the first um, camp that we're going to have in January for Extremely Together Philippines. So it's going to be a training program on oh, yeah. preventing violent extremism. And the participants of this camp, once they finish the training program, they're eligible to submit proposals and win a 30,000 peso grant. And we'll be looking for several organizations to give these mm -hmm. grants to. So if you're someone who might be interested in peace, who might be interested in doing your own peace project in your community, um, and if you have these ideas, uh, sign up for Extremely Together Philippines and um, you'll find more information there. So we also have a separate Facebook page for that. You can search that. Extremely Together Philippines, Panaghiusa. Panaghiusa is Bisaya for solidarity, unity. Ayun. Then, ako naman personally, I would like to bring you, to your attention probably um the work that the entire team is doing so i talk mostly about me here but i also want to thank my teammates from chris so now we have a full-time staff consisting of five brilliant people so shout out lang kay imari kier modi erica we have an erica too and cedric so thank you <laughs> Thank you guys for being an absolutely great team. Like um, we've had so much challenges, especially in the past year. But thank you for sticking through. And shout out as well to all our volunteers, all our donors, all the people who've supported us so far. And I hope that you stick with us for many stick more years. Because hindi kami mawawala. Nandito lang kami. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on V81 Radio, Manila.